suggesting, Mr. President, there's a military plot to take over the government. This may occur sometime this coming Sunday. There are some who will say, it can never happen here. But this is the story of how it could happen in seven days of intrigue, of blackmail, of terror, an eternity of suspense. This is the astounding story of a military plot to overthrow the government of the United States, which, if successful, would change the fate of every American. You're a nightcrawler, Colonel, a peddler. You sell information. Are you sufficiently up on your Bible to know who Judas was? Yes, I know who Judas was. He was a man I worked for and admired until he disgraced the four stars on his uniform. Seven days in May, the first day, when a Marine colonel wondered who was inciting screaming mobs in Madison Square Garden. We want Scott! We want Scott! We want Scott! The second day, that uncovered secret meetings in Washington's back alleys. The third day, when unknown men prepared to kidnap the president from his private vacation resort. The fourth day, that brought a secret presidential messenger to death in a plane crash in Spain. The day a senator of the United States was held against his will. The fifth day, when a woman found her past being used for blackmail. Look, Ellie, if I could tell you why I had I'll to tell do you this, something. you don't understand. I was a stupid, impressionable female who let an Air Force general use her like his personal airplane. The sixth day. The discovery of a desert base for an airborne task force, kept secret even from the President of the United States. The seventh day, when the head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff dared the President of the United States to stop the conspiracy that couldn't be proved. You're not a weak sister, Mr. President. You're a criminally weak sister. You say I've duped the people, General. I've built them, I've misled them, I've stripped them naked and made them defenseless. You accuse me of having lost their faith, deliberately and criminally shut my ears to the national voice. I do. Well, where the hell have you heard that voice, General? In freight elevators, in dark alleys, in secret places in the dead of night? How did that voice seep into a locked room full of conspirators? That's not where you hear the voice of the people, General, not in this republic. And I will not resign voluntarily. I'm going to fight you. And then we'll see which one of us the United States is willing to follow. <laughs> 